Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video for you here on how to work with images inside of Affinity Publisher. Uh, I want to do this because it can be a little bit confusing working with images, especially if you're used to coming from InDesign, because images don't always work the same way that they work in InDesign. I'm using Affinity Publisher Beta 1.7, so there's a possibility that the behavior for images could change but it seems like this is probably the way that Affinity is going at this point. And I think in a lot of ways it's going to be easier for people than InDesign. Pictures in InDesign have always caused people a lot of struggles, especially when they're new to the program. And so let's just dive in and look at how this works. So the first thing will be familiar if you've used InDesign before. You're going to go up to File and choose Place to get your image. And so I'm just going to choose this image here of Goblin Valley and click open. When I do that, my cursor is going to be loaded. Now, what's different here, if you're used to working in InDesign, is that I can't see the image that I'm placing. And so it's just got a little place icon. There's a couple things that I can do here. The first one is I can click and this will place it at full resolution, which is the same as InDesign and so the image is actually quite large. You can see here as I zoom out using option and scroll that the image is this big and my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper is this big. And so the image is way too large. So that's not really what I want. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that and go up here again to file place. And that's another difference is it doesn't reload your cursor when you hit Command Z at this point. I hope that that is something that Affinity will put into Publisher in the future, but right now it doesn't. So let's go ahead and choose place, grab our picture. And then the next way we can do this is we can actually click and drag to make the size that we want. Now it's automatically going to constrain the proportions. If you want to not have the portions constrained, you have to hold down shift, which is good, but takes some getting used to. Okay, so now I've placed it at the size that I want it to be and I can move it around the page. And the first thing that you'll notice if you're coming from InDesign is that this moves just the way that it should. There's no frame and image here. If I double click, I'm not getting anything to like zoom in on the image. If I resize this image, it's going to resize exactly. It's not going to crop it off as though it were a frame. It's just going to resize the way that it would in a program like say PowerPoint. So you don't get the same frame and image behavior here that you might be used to if you're coming from InDesign. Some people really want that though. So if you do want to be able to crop your image, you have to actually choose the crop tool over here on the left. Uh, it looks like the crop tool in most programs. And then you get this croppable frame. And you can see over here in the layers panel that it is actually applying a crop mask to it. So this is similar to kind of the crop tools in other Affinity programs like the vector crop tool in Designer. But you can always go back and change your image later. If you do want to see the kind of frame experience that you might be used to in InDesign, you actually have to place a frame first. So I'm going to come over here and grab the rectangle picture frame and I'll drag that out first to the size that I want it to be. And then I'll do file and place. And choose my image and open. And it's actually going to then place that inside of the frame and now I'll have a frame type of experience. You'll notice though that it's still is resizing proportionally. It's not cropping at this point. So to get some of your options that you might be used to from InDesign, you have to come up to this control bar and choose properties, and then you can choose what you want to do with the frame. So if I choose none here, you can see that the scaling is not happening. There's scale to max fit, which is what it's normally on, scale to min fit, which pushes the whole image in, stretch to fit, which will actually stretch the proportions of the image to fill the container that it's in. 
and so that doesn't work exactly the way that it does in InDesign. You'll still have to use the crop tool to probably get the same effect that you would be used to, but that is the way that it works here. It'll take some getting used to, I'm sure. So you then get this, oops, let's see, that's more what you would be expecting. And if you right click, you'll see that you don't have any fitting options here. So that is, a is different as well. And this guy right here is what will let you move, rotate the picture inside the frame. And then clicking on the picture itself will let you maneuver it around the frame. Okay, so that is basically how you're gonna work with pictures in Affinity Publisher. It shouldn't be too difficult, but it will take some getting used to coming from uh, InDesign especially or other layout programs that function differently. So just to review, you go up and you can do file place like you'd expect. And then you can place the image either at its full resolution or at the size that you want by clicking and dragging. Or you can come over here and choose a frame and place the image. Or you can actually choose this picture tool as well, which is just like choosing file place and using an image. So those are the way to put an image into your document. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do, please hit the like button down below and feel free to comment with any of your experience using images in Affinity Publisher or other programs so that we can all learn from each other. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.